oh that's good sorry this is this is start as me going oh that's good a voice said recording in progress you turned yeah. into such a nana. You're like, oh, yeah. Jesus, look at that. Oh, Jesus, no. I think just popped up and said, and, and asked me, did I want to leave the meeting because you were recording it? It did it. Yeah, it said recording in progress. And then it said continue or leave meeting. So you can be like, well, I'm out of here, boys. I was never here. Wow, Christ. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what had popped up at the people's ends. And that's, she's only started talking now recently, that, that one. Like, so. That's the first time I've seen that. Um, I suppose so. I, I presume if you're planning to storm the capital or something, you want to know that it's been recorded. You're like, uh, 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 don't want this to be brought up on the internet in years to come. Are you are you overly private? I doubt you are. Like, you know, the way people are very conscious about, hey man, you know, they're fucking, they're going to use all of my stuff. I'm not really. No, I don't. I don't put every single aspect of my life out there on the internet. But at the same time, I don't hide. You know. I think I, uh, for a while, myself and my wife were very, um, we were quite pleased that we didn't think Facebook knew we were married. Or that we even knew each other. You know, we were like, ah, we've tricked them. But of course they did. Like, you know. Of course they do. Facebook yeah. was at the wedding in everybody's oh, pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we live streamed it. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. I, I, somebody, somebody said to me once, because I used to do, I used to do when I was doing stand up, I used to have a bit about like, you know, uh, worrying when, when, when you're just about to become a parent. And I, I, somebody said to me, he was like, did you ever have that kid? Did you, know, did your wife have that kid? I was like, yeah, of course. It's the normal length of time, you know, nine months. And then it was. And they were, they said, oh, yeah, yeah. Just because I didn't see photos all over the internet, like on all your social media. And I was like, oh, yeah, I suppose. I never made the conscious. I just, at the start, I was like, I, I just won't put pictures up. Yeah. But yeah, then, yeah. But it's not like I don't have any pictures of my son on, online. Um, isn't isn't that isn't that funny? Like, does he exist? In basis, what somebody said. Does he exist? Because I was just, they were just wondering because they hadn't seen they hadn't seen any <laughs> photos of him on Facebook, and they're like, okay, but I just oh, said, yeah. Clearly, you're not a parent, so you're not a parent if you haven't put your child online. Maybe so. I was just making it all up because I thought of some funny jokes. I know because there's a few people I know that have used the. You know, the soon to be father stuff, and they're using it. The kid is in fucking secondary school, like you know what I mean. There's, because... Listen, I I did <laughs> I did a set last summer, no summer before last. I think it was the last stand up set I did, and I still did that stuff. Like I prepped it in advance of like yeah. I had some whatever. It was like oh, but when I was, and I really felt at the time, I was like, wow. <laughs> this material <laughs> is old. <laughs> I know how old it is because my son is the same age as these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, you can you quantify it by the age. Yeah, yeah perfect. So by the time he's, he's he's you know, you know, tiny shoelaces and actually writing, I think it might you know, it's hard well, to put he, him away. He's going, he's going into first class, so I think it's time to put that away. <laughs> but I haven't done, I haven't done stand, well, nobody has, but you know, I, haven't done, I haven't really done stand up in, in so long. So, you know, I was, that, that, that was coming I, out of retirement as a gig. You know, it was like, oh, I'll do it because it was in Kilkenny. And I was like, why not? You know? Are you originally from Kilkenny? No, no, my wife is. Right. That's why we came back here when we fled Dublin. Because I remember you were one of the first people that bust out. There was no pandemic or anything, but it was a couple of years back. We, I, I remember you telling me not, I'm off to kill Kenny now, and that's it. I was like, yeah. And I couldn't, I was such a, so indoctrinated by the idea that you needed to be in the city or whatever. And I was like, oh man, how are you going to do it, man? <laughs> well, to, then, be on, to be honest, I did, we didn't kind of really know, like everything, we just do stuff. I mean, yeah. We're bad at planning, I'm terrible at planning. And we just, we kind of got to the point where we were like, look, we wanted to, we knew like we we're never going to be able to afford to buy a house in Dublin where we want to live. Like yeah, we, were living, we were living in Stony Batter. I'd been there for 10 years and we, like the house we were renting, we like, would never be able to afford it. Yeah, of course. Buy it like off the landlord. So we were like, well, we can't continue to live here like and, and purchase a house. And we're not going to be, we didn't want to be living in the suburbs of Dublin, we're like, what's the, you know, what's the point of that? You maze, but yeah, we 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 like to live in in the middle of town, and um, and so we decided before before the young lad started school and all that, we'd be like, we might as well go and sort of settle somewhere where we probably will have a chance of doing it, as opposed to like waiting 
till he's in like second class and then yeah in the loot and so we just up sticked and headed to Kilkenny because her family are here and we're like well that makes a bit, bit as a as a as a not a commuter town but in, in shooting distance of Dublin yeah of course yeah 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 I mean and the world like you were the the, the outrunner the, the fucking the maverick oh <laughs> uh, yeah I'm, I'm I'm breaking the mold as usual <laughs> but but isn't it funny like literally what you just said there like Eh, let's just do it because of the kid and stuff like that. Gordo's done the same thing. I've oh, done the yeah. exact same thing. It's it kind of gets to the point where you're like, look, I th- I'm thinking about other things now, and I'm thinking yeah. about the future a bit more. Where it's the future was never a consideration, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is being an adult now. This shit, like, yeah, you're you slowly starts to dawn on you. Like, oh no, is this it? Have I have I become an adult suddenly or stealthily? Um. But yeah, but then I, I mean, we didn't really have a plan. I was thinking I'd just commute up to Dublin every so often for work because I was kind of working shift work as an editor and I'd do like three days a week. And I was like, oh, that's manageable. And we were living on the Dublin side of Kilkenny at the time, like not in the city. Yeah. So like an hour on a Sunday, you'd be in Dublin from our house to the Keys on a Sunday. You were, you were, you were it was an hour. So I was like, oh, yeah, it's grand. But then uh, it got worked down here, so we didn't have to do that. Grant. Yeah. But do, do you know, isn't that gas? Because you 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 will make it work. That's, I think, what the biggest thing for me was like, what the fuck are we? But all of a sudden, oh, yeah, it's actually grand. It works perfectly. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's luck involved. And we were very lucky that, like, just the, the way jobs worked out. I, I was, I actually came, moved down slightly earlier than, than, than the others just to start, start working a job. But, um, it was, it was grand and was lucky. And I was just talking to a guy, a young writer yesterday, and he was asking me, do you have to be in Dublin to write, like to write, he's trying to, he's trying to become a TV writer. And, um, he was asking me like, do you have to, do you have to be in Dublin to be, or to, 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 be working in in tv and it's like i don't think you do anymore because no this, like you can just go like i i was i did say to him like i was already writing before i left dublin so like but i don't think there's a big difference he but there's just, there's this now there's literally this exactly like this you, you, you have a I writer's mean, room after this and i'm guessing you ain't going to a room no no i mean there's some things that i think will go back to being like a writer's room especially i i think i think for certain stuff you'd like to be in the room with each other yeah 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 but for all those meetings and stuff if you're just talking to someone about one person about a script you've written or a script you want to write or something like that why i i i have before the pandemic i've like driven up to dublin for a meeting for an hour meeting or an hour and a half and then driven home and you're like that's my whole day gone yeah for yeah. an hour and a half of a meeting that could be done like this like so you know i i, I think he was anyway. This is young. I was relieved to be like, yes, good, because I might not be able to afford to live in Dublin. <laughs> I think the last, the last, what's the last time I saw you? You had the podcast. The time you were living in Dublin, properly um, hung out with you anyway. Like, I mean, I, the last, I think we probably was it at the Vodafone comedy shop? Yes, saw each other. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. Next Christ, day, which was. 2018, 17? 20, I think it was, I said 2018, I'd say. And I don't think I was, I wasn't on, because we did it, we did it with reviewables, or I think reviewables. Uh, <laughs> our podcast that myself and Edwin had, we did it, we were on in one of the podcast tents in 2017. And we did it, I think it was 2017, we did it as a big, messy game show thing with loads of people on stage and it was, oh, it was it was good fun but it was completely mad like it wasn't it was too too many people on a stage just too much talking over each other and but you know it's the Vodafone Comedy Festival it's good crack yeah but did, and why I have to ask well how come reviewables didn't continue I said had had zoom and whatnot been it was it not in your lexicon or it just it's always think, tough when there's two blokes involved like I guess I think I genuinely, I, 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 when I moved, I did come back up every so often and we keep doing it. We do ones at the weekends and that. Um, but then I think I genuinely believed that oh, for comedy, you have to be in the room. Yeah. And it wouldn't work over Zoom. 
And obviously that's been proved completely wrong by yeah. loads of old comedy podcasts that kept going and that were like, you know, comedy bang bang. Though that sort of like improv thing that still managed to work on Zoom. So I was like, oh, well, I was wrong. But um, yeah, so then just, just was like, oh, I think it's time to hand it over. Yeah, because the last, the last thing I remember from that was we invented pizza lollies. Do you remember <laughs> we, pizza lollies? Yeah. That was, oh, let me see now. I'll look it up and I'll be able to tell your listening. So I had to go back and find pizza lollies. Pizza I, thought, I, still, I still think that's a runner, Ian. Look, Tom, if you don't copyright it, it's <laughs> Wait, there we go. July 2018, we did it. Or it went out. It's on. If you look up pizza lolly, Tom O'Mahony, listeners. That's incredible. That, that's actually tagged in it. That, that's, that was the... Wow. <laughs> there you go. That was, uh, <laughs> I do. I, the, odd time, the odd time I go back and listen to some of them, they're funny. But like, now you've got like, I listened, to, I listened back to some one episode there recently and had Peter McGann on it. And then at the end of the episode, Peter McGann came on doing an ad. It was like, this is just so weird now. Jesus. It was like, you know, the rolling ad yeah. that they have on, on, um, on, on ACAST or whatever it's on. And um, it was like, that's strange. It just yeah, seemed, yeah, like, yeah, the, the person who the podcast weird, shouldn't yeah. be doing the ad at the end, but it just rolled in. That's like I had Dave Moore on last week from today. I mean, he, he landed a gig doing a voiceover. But he at the time, he was, he was producing music and ads. Mm. And as he walked up the road, he got a phone call going he just got an ad in there from a guy doing a russian accent he was like yes and it was him he got the he literally got the gig on the way home for the producer thing he's like well then two checks baby thank you very much nice it's it's odd though i mean we nobody saw this coming and i was i was messaging i was chatting with somebody on the phone yesterday who's their whole business they're in construction but their whole business has had to kind of move he's actually landing more jobs he's very specialized it's golf course building but he's um He's landed jobs now because he's he's kind of nearly able to charm himself over Zoom, where he says he's just landed the biggest job in Europe in in Belgium. And he says, realistically, wow. because of Zoom, I'd say that's why I got it, because I was able to stay on with the lads and where other people were almost fly in and meet you to talk. He's, I was constantly on, on tying in with him. But yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, I was gigging in London. And after the gig, there was a couple of big old names on the lineup. These... You know, kind of well, I say big names, but what they are is kind of those burnt out older British comedians. A lot, I fucking t- yeah. Do you, do you deserve this? But afterwards, I'd had a good show, and afterwards, these two lads came over, very enthusiastic. Uh, real London, you need to come over and do that, fam. Well, we and this boy started to talk about film selling tickets virtually, also to live shows. Wouldn't it be fantastic to get two forms of fucking streams of income? And I went, let's. You're fucking dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> All these people who were ahead of their time and us shutting them down going, that'll never work, that'll never work. You guys have morons. And then you're like, oh yeah, okay. I see what he was talking about now. Yeah, Christ, Christ. The but there me. is, I mean, there is a thing though, especially with stand-up, like even across virtual shows and everything, you're like, it's it's great that, are, that people are doing it and are able to do it and there's an audience, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I've watched a few and you're like, this is good. But it's like watching a stand-up DVD at home. You're 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 removed from it completely. You're not you're not there. You're not there's not the same. The only thing that works that I found is when it's not stand-up, stand-up. You know what I mean? If you can almost make it like a conversation piece, like a monologue to a degree. Yeah. But if you're go, you know, if you're if you're throwing a hook out there for any sort of reaction from people. Mm. forget about like we did a, a phenomenal virtual thing in Galway a couple of months back and it was this fucking huge LCD screen and they had like 100 people on the wall and they were able to pull people up in front like we're talking 16 foot by 16 foot by 10 foot screens right. phenomenal cost phenomenal cost to bring and if I would not be lying Keen, if I said give me an old pallet and yeah. five people in a field you'd be better off it just it because there's no it's and it's as close to it as that's why I, I never think I you know they talk about this AI uh sex that's gonna oh it'll take over, you know, where you just lie down and just a milking machine basically sorts you out and you're you know, you have this black mirror style fucking 
VR goggles on. This is an interesting jump. Yeah, go on. <laughs> it, but it, by the it's same not, token, yeah, tis, on, tis only grand. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a pull quote for the box. Ah, tis only grand. <laughs> Come on, Tom, we need more energy. Come on. Tis grand. Tis grand. Tis grand. No, you... it, it is. It's the thing of you want to be back in the stinky, smelly, cramped back room of a pub. <laughs> yeah, like the, I used to love the bankers. Do you remember when we used to do the bankers? The bankers, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all, a tiny little fucking landing that none of we, all of us shouldn't have been on. A photograph actually popped up in a timeline. Somebody tagged me in. I don't know if they tagged you, but you were in it. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't see that. Of us yeah. standing on the stairs in the bankers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, and we all looked kind of a bit fucked, but not like we look youthfully fucked, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm guessing there was either beer or just fear or something was involved, like, or anxiety or something. And probably if it was in any way warm, just sweat because you're just standing on that staircase and all the hot air is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, yeah. Fucking hell, the old big cramped fucking stairs. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, the bankers was weird. The only thing I didn't, I, I liked playing in the bankers. The only thing was that thing of you couldn't, you were outside the room. You couldn't hear properly Terrified. what was happening. So you, there's a lot of coming in and you're like doing a bit and you're like, oh no, did somebody already do this? Yeah. Material? And you're like, yeah, okay. Cool. Or the you're list, was, you're was a, uh, The bankers was the spot I remember retiring a joke because a drunk guy in the audience got the punchline like and Shit. said it out right and i was Shit. like i was like okay if that guy in his <laughs> thing, is able to come get to the punchline and figure it out I, I have to get rid of this joke see that's the staunch writer in you there now you were you had the enough self-awareness to go oh so literally a cat wandered into my room and finished off the paragraph that's essentially <laughs> what happened because yeah. this guy has the his brain dead full of oh, drink he got, a, he got a great laugh and I oh. took credit for it, so it was fine because I was going to say the same thing. But um, yeah, I was, like, I was like, "Oh, that has to go. That joke is gone now." But uh, yeah, does that that discipline come as a result of being a writer, where you have to you have to fucking, as they say, you know, they kill your babies? Like, well, you so you go, ah, "This is a fucking really good fucking piece, guys. We should." I don't. It, I yeah, can't, I, can su I? I suppose. I mean, that one was literally because I was like, "No, well, if this guy's," I mean, the whole point is that. The audience should not be ahead of you. Yeah. But um, I suppose there is a bit of that. I I'm I reluctantly let things go. <laughs> you know, I'm reluctant to do, but I know what has to be done. It's it depends, it depends on what I'm working on. I think if I'm writing for somebody else, I'm uh more it's much easier to go, oh okay, that's not going grand, we'll just cut that bit. Yeah. Whereas if it's my own thing that I've been working on myself, I think it's much harder. You've gone very, I'm very days. blurry. Just as you said yeah. that, I think I, I think it's the it's the way to your speech. It's a brand brand new camera I'm after getting, and I don't know what I'm after fucking do, but I have the set and set. It's some like yeah. I think You're it's right. expecting me to run or something like that. I <laughs> I don't know, but sorry for cutting you off of my fucking no, weird, you're right. weird um, vision. I think that's it though. If it's your own thing that you've been working on, you're I'm I'm much more reluctant to I'm. I'm like it's harder to, to tear bits away from me or like no no that's the way it has to be you know that joke has to be there or whatever or that scene and you just have to be it has to be pried away from you that's why i think um i'm working with script editors at the moment on on two different things on a feature i'm writing and on a, a, a series a tv series that sounds very highfalutin but this is like this is just stuff i'm doing myself i haven't you know i'm this hasn't been commissioned or anything like oh, that okay cool but it's just to get it to that try to get it to the point where it's where people will take an interest or you can get some interest from a broadcaster or whatever because I can only get stuff to a certain point myself as a writer and then I need someone else to come in and read it and go well actually what you're doing wrong is this or you know what you need more of is this or here's why this bit doesn't work because have you gotten very good at uh, being polite around the situation because there's two creative kind of ego is coming in at that point just because i could see myself being a maniac and going are you fucking stupid did you not <laughs> are you reading what i fucking wrote you know oh, yeah internally but exter externally i'm going i see as my eye starts to twitch like going, I get oh it's i mean this is there is yeah i've had <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a learning curve like when you first get when you like my first 
big writing job was I, I'd written for like Republic of Telly and I'd written for I'd done a Storyland and a couple other things but I got a, I got a job writing an episode of Red Rock remember it's still on TV they're still showing it um, so and the notes I got back from the head writer were uh, she didn't pull punches like she was really like, yeah well just I mean to be to be fair, like she's, you know, she's over the whole series and she's reading everyone's scripts and she doesn't have time to be nice. You know, it was yeah. just like, no, this is, I, I what's the line she wrote on it now? Um, this is tedious. That was what it was. <laughs> this is tedious. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and and now this is no um, <laughs> this is not trying to be mean to her. It was tedious. It needed to be a lot better. <laughs> But it was just, it was at that point I was like, oh, okay, all right. And did you get the get full fired. episode? Did you get the... I wrote, I wrote a full episode and then um, they did actually, then they, they because of the way, you know, they have these things, they have like a series and have all these different storylines and whatever going on. They had to move some stuff around. So some from another episode got put into mine. So I don't, I didn't get full writer's credit on the episode or whatever but um, but I wrote an episode and I was lined up to write more uh, when they got when they got cancelled so that was a shame because I know Johnny Candon wrote a, a one Johnny or wrote a bunch of them yeah that's yeah. where I met Johnny actually I, I'd never met Johnny doing stand-up I only I met him in literally in the writer's room of, of uh, Red Rock right and yeah. he's he's gone on to do all, all loads of um British uh Casualty and EastEnders and loads of things. I know he was in England for a long time too, you see, and uh, I know he, he, he would have rubbed shoulders with a lot of big, big names. Well, actually, I mean, would have played with an awful lot of fucking big, big yeah. acts and stuff like that. So he'd be cute enough, crafty enough to get his, his leg in the door oh, there. Like. Yeah, and going, I'm coming through Red Rock because Red Rock was produced by like this guy, John York, who has, has worked on all of those shows. Okay, right. You know, yeah, yeah. And there was... I, I was like, oh, should I keep going? And I was, I was kind of thinking of going down that route, and then I was like, oh, this sounds hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I should have pursued it more. I still might uh, down the line, but you know, I was kind of got other work writing, so it's. You know. Do people like what is a normal? Well, there is no normal week. I suppose everything changes from from you know because it, it, it's such a vast vast profession to be doing, but. Who approaches you then and what manner do they approach you in going, hey, and how do you deflect if you're shite? Like? How do I deflect if someone is, if someone wants me to write on something that's shite? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or do you go, listen, we'll try and polish this turd as best we can. Like? I, you know, I, it's very, I, somebody has money. <laughs> it's not shite. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, I, I know actually most things I've been, I've, I, I don't think I've worked on anything that I'd be like, that's absolutely unredeemably terrible. Yeah. No. And by the power of pressing the stop button and record again, we're a day later. I'm here with back, of course, with uh, Kean McGargle. And uh, yeah, I uh, adulting again, Kean. I got an adult phone call that electrician showed up and had to go and adult the situation to like that shit doesn't happen as a baby. You know, nobody's going, okay. hey, you got fucking responsibilities. Come on. I just the jealousy. Yeah, you, when you're writing. Have you ever gone, I want to get inside the mind? Obviously, you would. You would, because you're writing. But, you, like, is there ever a ridiculous person you're trying to get inside the head of? Do you know? Uh, or, a, like, a child. Yes. A child? You know, I find ridiculous people very easy to write. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> very easy to draw on life experience. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's there's, it slowly just creeps up on you. You're like, oh, well. Better do this thing now and better edge the lawn. I was, I was out the other day edging the lawn. That's the most adult shit of all time. Like you're edging the lawn. Yeah, edging man. The lawn. It's not, we don't even own the house. Like, why am I doing it? But <laughs> making it nice. Like just, and you know, that, that sort of thing was only done when you had to do it. You know, your parents would make it go out, get the lawnmower. Since you're home, you go home, come home from college, grant, get the lawnmower and go out there and mow that lawn for me. Yeah, I've been considering getting a goat. Just fucking let them have it. Let get loose. Just fucking get out there. Nibble the grass. I, I think there's an awful benefit to having a goat. I I I I, done, I mean, there's the lawn and 
many other benefits that I can't think of right now. Well, I mean, you can milk the goat and then also you own a goat. How cool is it to own a goat? Well, that, I mean, that's true. You can just say, I'll just go out. I think it's out behind the goat. <laughs> Hey. Hmm. Um, what's a what's a goat like noise wise? They're probably not that noisy. No, they're not. They just make a little kind of. Eh, that's it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're 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 like as good as a guard dog if you can get a good angry one. So angry you know goes. they've got yeah, two knives yeah. on their head. So I, I got a I got a thing through the door the other day. Uh, it was trying to sell those uh, Robo lawnmowers. You know the ones parents I, ha- parents have one. Do it's they? Unbelievable. Never, no petrol, no pull starting the cunt, no fucking pushing it around for an hour, sweating your balls off, dumping. There's no dumping the grass. That for me is the number one one because it's just scrim- taking a millimeter every day and that's enough for it to break down naturally. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So you never have to. Never dump in the grass ever again. See, I don't even have a place to dump the grass here and I have to go every so often. I'm just bags of grass. I have to go to the dump and get rid of them. Uh, and see then that? It's, just, it's just like, oh, come on. Yeah. It, tarmac the fucking thing you know what I mean or it, what's the point fucking oh, yeah. hell but getting back to the to the the, 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 the writing and whatnot and I think the last thing we were talking about was you know is, is there anything where you will you won't turn down but have you has anything ever surprised you where you've gone oh this is actually class this is you know what I mean where you go where you hadn't high hopes but there's nothing lovelier than finding out a thing has actually turned out brilliant for you yeah, um, I think there is actually. There's the odd time where I've come on board with something like maybe not as writing, but but like almost like a script editor thing, like yeah. helping someone out with the uh, like as a favor. You send you a script and you do a pass on it and give them notes or whatever. And there's been a few times like that where things have gone like to see real improvement, like something getting really good, like and you know there had there have to have been something in it at the start for you to want to go like I will because I've done it in the past where even just agreeing to read scripts from people you're like oh yeah yeah I'll read that script when I was when I was starting out I was like oh I'll I'll direct like I went to college went into college studying film and I was like oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna write and then when I got into college I was like oh this directing is kind of like the idea of directing yeah yeah, and yeah, yeah. I kind of did a little bit of that and then went, I don't know, I'll just do the right thing. <laughs> but I was getting scripts sent to me by people. This was, I made a short. This was about, well, it's about nine years ago now. And I, ha- I was on the lookout for maybe some other scripts that people might need a director. And I got sent some by some producers. And just some of the stuff you get sent is just <laughs> shocking. Like, oh, yeah. just stuff where you, you were like trying to. T- uh, apply to schemes that are like you know going to give you like ten thousand euro or whatever, which sounds like a load, but it's not. When you burn through that in no time. Like. Yeah, that's a small, low budget short that you're making, and you're paying. You have enough there to feed your crew and maybe pay some people a little bit of money. Um, and this is what we were going to apply for, and this I had to send in scripts that had like a car chase and a train and <laughs> stunts and everything. And 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 on top of that, it was like a terrible script. But you're you're looking at it going, do you know what do you think we're going to do with this? Like we're, they're going to look at it and go, you can't make that for ten grand. Like where you, you're not even going to get near a train. Like you can't even afford the insurance <laughs> to get into the train station. So, that sort of thing was so you know I kind of got a bit wary then of taking helping people, but if somebody if I know someone or if you know if, if someone's recommended or you know that sort of thing you're doing something. that reminds me I must send you a script. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it's it's but there's that sort of that sort of stuff can be surprising and also in the last while I've started writing for animation. Which I had never, I'd never even reconsidered really before. It was completely like obviously I was aware that animation is going on and in Ireland and there's a, there's a, like a really thriving animation industry. Thriving, yeah. Um, but I never, I never even thought about like, well, I could do that. I was, I don't know. It was just wasn't. I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's other people do the animation stuff. Yeah, of course. And then, um, and then I was, I, I got it, I was editing for, for uh, Cartoon Saloon. I edited a series for them and I just started getting into animation. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, just see how much, 
opportunities are there. And so I've been doing a bit of animation right now. Too. Can you let your imagination go wild then? Because anything's possible, is it? You Surely. Know, you know, you, you can and you can't. It's, it's, it, was a re, it was a steep learning curve for me because I was the same. I was like, well, you can draw anything. Yeah, and yeah. But, you, but everything you come up with, someone has to design. Like, they don't just draw it in. Like, there's prop, you know, so it's, there's a, there's a, a design team that are like saying, oh, he, well, he has a car. You know, like, okay, well, we have to design all the cars in the show. And they're like, well, this car turns into a robot. And they're like, okay, we have to design the robot car then. And then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything takes time uh, and that costs money. But like you can, I mean, they can be in space as easily as they can be in a sitting room. I'm with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're, but you can, you, you do have to limit yourself this is just the practicalities of it. Like when you're writing it, nah, it doesn't really matter. But like when you get down into the actual making of the show, someone has to spend time designing every little thing that you come up with. And that costs money because they're getting paid. And, you know, there, there's, there's a, a limited budget on the show and there's time limits and all this. So there is limits that I, I never even thought about. I just presumed everything just gets drawn. Just like me, I thought, right, yeah. so we can draw flying cows, can we? Great. Yeah. Wait. And you, you can, it's just there's a team of, and there's a workflow behind us and there's all this stuff, like like all the locations are done by somebody and like these amazingly skilled artists drawing these, um, these like fantastic locations that you see and then kids don't even pay attention. It's just Not so. You're like, this person is... Peppa like, Pig, Peppa Pig. Peppa yeah. Pig. Do you know what I mean? That's what... Designed by somebody. To, you know, but versus, you know, space cows and kids love Peppa Pig. Like, so just well, saying. I've never, um, I've never been as aware of how bad I am at art as I have <laughs> work, working in Cartoon Saloon because the every single person in there can draw like to a phenomenal degree. Like they, these uh, no messing around, like everyone in there is really good, like really, really good. And I'm there clicking buttons on the computer going, I'm an editor. <laughs> <laughs> the editors are all, they're all like a little group of themselves and they're all no artistic, uh, no artistic talent whatsoever. Well, I certainly didn't. And do you, do you find yourself being drawn to a certain, when it's say you are given a blank fucking, you're said, right, here's a ball of money, sit down, create something. Yeah. Is it is comedy? Would that be where you go down? Or are you, fuck this, I want to do a slasher movie. Never done it like that before. Where, you know, I'm 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 kind of I kind of always find myself leaning towards comedy. Yeah. Um. Not exclusively, like, but but it tends to be even when I come up with like dark stuff, it tends to be dark and comedic. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, it just the way my brain works. Like when I was a kid, I was making stupid little videos on a the camcorder at home, like, which I suppose if it was nowadays, I'd be I'd been putting up on YouTube, but this was just. For the family to watch like just stupid things with my brothers and sisters you know fake ads and you know sketches like so, yeah, and so you're way be way ahead of your time so well I mean, you'd probably be a millionaire child now just i saying. would yeah that, that's definitely was, it, the only reason i'm not a millionaire is I've, been, <laughs> I've been telling this i told i've been telling the bank this as well but they don't want to know um but yeah, no stupid stuff. Like I, I remember we did an ad for instant water as a powder and you add water and then you have water. And I thought that was the funniest thing ever. I'm not joking with you. That's pretty fucking tight. That's, <laughs> that's pretty tight. Like as a... But, but uh, yeah, it was just, I was always sort of leaning towards kind of, kind of comedy stuff. So I kind of would. The stuff I come up with is normally comedic, but I am, I'm working on a horror series at the moment. Are you? That's, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like I'm trying to, I'm developing it myself. I've, I've put a good bit of work into it myself and I'm hoping to get it off the ground or get somebody interested in it. But it's not comedic at all. It's dark. It's very, very dark. And it's the first time I've done something that's, that there wouldn't be, like, there's no jokes in it, you know, at all. Do you need anybody with a mullet and a moustache like this? Yeah, every horror has to have someone with a mullet and a moustache in it, really. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A, horror, a horror series set in Mayo, that's what I want to write tonight. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, but no, generally stuff is just kind of tends towards comedy. Like, and I found, like, I, I found that 
I could do it. I can like I can write stuff that's funny, or at least I think it's funny. I mean, that's why I started doing stand up. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Of course. I was writing comedy scripts and trying to get people interested and trying to get funding for shorts and things and having no luck at all. And then you just started doubting, you know, you kind of doubt yourself. Then you're like, is this actually any good or am I just, I mean, the thing is the scripts weren't any good, but I was like, am I trying to figure out like, am I actually fooling myself? Is any of this funny? So I thought like, if I do, if I do stand up, I'll find out pretty quickly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You very quickly, obviously, if you're, if you can tell a joke or not, but it's, write a joke. it's rough too, like, isn't it? Because you, it could be high quality stuff, but not what they're looking for right now. So, you oh, know? Yeah. There's a million reasons why something gets turned down and like, look, I mean, it has to be really good. Well, mostly. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then there's there's look there's the person read like people point out like it's the person reading it like we did a thing um we did a storyland series um a while yes, back I remember that yeah yeah and um so Barry Murphy was in it and Mark Doherty and Colin McDonald and it was great like it was amazing to have like Barry Murphy and Mark Doherty when I was a kid like watching watching them do Couched and the end yeah. and all that stuff and then like they're in a thing you've written is like holy shit this is mad but we were doing that and it was in for funding it was it, it applied to two funded schemes we applied to the storyland scheme that rte run uh, and then we'd applied to this film-based scheme so i had a, a slightly altered version of the script that we'd run with, with um that i'd applied to film base and anyway we, so we had two interviews one on a tuesday and one on a wednesday and in the film-based interview the one of the people on the panel went through it and just said, this is just not good. Like, just, she did not like it. It was not her cup of tea, and she let us know, which is fair enough. But I was like, we're a bit like, oh, okay. And then we went into RT the next day. They're like, this is great. We really like this. And myself and the director are sitting there going, like, what's this? Like, what? You can't tell. No. Like, and these, and, and like, it got made, and it did very well. People really liked it, and we did it. We kind of went around with a few festivals with it, and it's... It's um, as a, you know, there was like web series festivals and things. And yeah, it did really well. And it was a great thing to have. And it got me in working with that production company and everything. But um, it's not on the internet now. It's gone, has to be gone because we don't have the rights to it or whatever. Isn't that funny? Just you say that it could be down to the person, literally 180 oh, degrees polarity. Oh, like. Personal taste, isn't it? Like we, uh, just like the exact same as that, we made a, myself and a, a, a writer made, um, made it was based around the the, un, the 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 dark underworld of stand-up comedy yeah nine minutes of the pilot put it forward and same guy now has written award-winning stuff um we had colin mcdonald we had john cleary we had pat mcdonald and joe rooney involved and yeah um one or two more but it was just like literally not not a whole place it's so like, it was it was phenomenal how they 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 just it wasn't even a case of okay so you got this culmination together you got this they just didn't want to know they just get the fuck out get out to fuck and he the same guy writes for RT so he it wouldn't have been that he would have been blacklisted or anything like you know yeah, he writes stuff for you're, RT you're going in going like this is talent that is well capable of delivering stuff to you they're known faces they can act this guy can write and like no we yeah. don't want to. I, I've we we what was it um so I did a short the first short that I had written myself and directed was was it's, it's up on Vimeo you can watch it it's got no messages we shot it yes. in Thomas House in um uh, on just across from Vicar Street great pub uh so we were we shot that and it was doing it was good enough doing the rounds getting into loads of festivals good audience reaction people really enjoyed it like. And we were trying to get it in with this kind of distributor who, you know, handles, they'll take on a short film and get it around to like, you know, sell it to a TV station in Azerbaijan or I don't know, wherever, you know, yeah. and then just get you a little bit of money maybe. No, didn't want to see it. He was like, it's set in a pub. No, don't care. It's like, they, they, and the producer was kind of like, you know, it's, it's good. Like, it's really good. It plays really well in front of an audience. He goes, no, there's too many Irish films set in pubs. Well, terrible. Don't see it. 
I just wouldn't, just did not care. And there's, and that's it. Like his, his, obviously his choice. He didn't want, that's what he didn't want, but he didn't. He just immediately was like, no, no, thank you very much. Let's give me something else. Yeah, and uh, there you go. You can't. And, and if it had been somebody else, they might have, you know, you don't know what would have happened out of it. Like yeah. myself and myself and the and the, the Rory Connolly uh, from Diet of Worms, who was who was the lead in it, we wrote a pilot based on it, like I would do a whole series. And we got good, like. Uh, we were kind of touted around a bit and got a little bit of interest it never went anywhere and people like the pilot script and all that and we kind of have it as a nice writing sample now but but you know it's that sort of thing of if your man had maybe been on board for it and watched it it might have gone somewhere someone might have seen it you know he could have had a row with the fucking wife that weren't here do you know what i mean like so many variables that that go into something some person's decision like there's so much chance that happens in the business that you no control over whatsoever you just have to go oh well you know this is what it is like you can you can you can never like you can't change someone's taste do you know what i mean you can yeah, change yeah, mind yeah. about something you could convince them to watch something that they had not wanted to watch and but if somebody watches something and they don't like it i don't know that any way you can make them like it like especially with comedy. But I mean, I'm sure I would sit and watch things and go, no, that's not for me. But commercially, I can see that absolutely fucking working. You know what I mean? Like if it was, yeah. a, I think, based around English football, I yeah. go, oh God, I want to pull my fucking teeth out. But that could definitely work. So, I mean, opinion but, is one thing. and and, and Oh, I like, think there's a lot of, there's a lot of producers who would be like, this isn't my cup of tea, but I'm certainly gonna help you try and get it made because i yeah. can see that we there's an audience for this thing yeah that's definitely out there right people like but you know yourself like if you if you try to if you show someone like a comedy that you love and they don't like it it's the most excruciating oh experience. There, there because, are, it's, it's gonna get better I, I was gonna get yeah no no wait yeah, yeah, yeah and they're looking at you like what's wrong with you why do you do you think that's funny and you're it's just, oh, it's awful. It's, it's brutal. Crazy. Yeah, so that's, I mean, tasting comedy is especially, like, it's, you have to really like it as well. Like, I, <laughs> I went to see Stuart Lee in Vicker Street a couple of years ago with my friend Will, and we were, you know, you share the table. Yeah. So there's myself and Will sitting at this table, and then a couple. Now, I, I don't know who they were. I don't know if it was their first date. I don't know if they were a long-term couple or whatever, but it became apparent that he was a fan of Stuart Lee and she was along because like, hey, let's go see this comedian. Because the more he laughed, the angrier she looked. Really? She, oh, she was just <laughs> annoyed. And it's that thing of like, you brought me to see this guy and he's not, and you know, Stuart Lee is, is very divisive anyway. Well, he's marmite. He's, he's absolute fucking marmite. Yeah. Right? And he was doing his whole stuff about like, oh, this room's too big. There's too many people here. Half of you people shouldn't be here. You're not my crowd. You know, that sort of thing. He's trying to turn the crowd on itself. And we were all laughing because it's like, oh, this is this, this is this a thing. This is funny. a shtick. Yeah. yeah. And oh, no, this was just she was not. And I don't think it's a that, that, that you know, I, I, it's just taste like she's just not on for it. And then there was an interval. After the interval, they did not come back to the table. Brilliant. I can imagine but that it, conversation. Oh, just like, why did you bring me to that? Like, that's right. Like, but, you know, it's just the way it is. So if someone, if you're trying to get, and I think especially when you're trying to get like a comedy made and you have a script, a script alone can be really hard to sell something on. Yeah, oh Christ, because it can... It, stuff can read really badly if it's, yeah. you know. I was uh, just talking about this the other day. I was saying, like, I've never read the script of, like, a Will Ferrell film, like Step Brothers or something. Yeah. I don't know how that would read on the page, because that's all about the two boys. It would read terribly on the page. <laughs> it would absolutely read ter terribly on the page. Like, you can only imagine that he has half a directorial role when he's there going, right, we know the script, yeah. So, but I, I'm going to make it Will Ferrell. Of course you exactly, are. Exactly. Yeah. Of course and you are Will Ferrell. Off you yeah, go, Will that's, Ferrell. I mean, yeah. that's we're along for the ride and we know who it is. So if you're known like that, but that's why I suppose it's, 
more and more people are making their own little like tastes or reel or whatever for a show to try and like they're going like this is the show we want to make and here's like three minutes of the style of it just to try and try and sell it because people I suppose want to have to have to see how it's going to you know how it's going to play out or whatever or that there is jokes or that there is going to be or I don't I don't know it's so I, I I was in a movie that it was just, it was strange it was I shot it for a full week. We were in a movie to, uh, that we shot down awfully. Mm. And it was the only straight role I've ever played. Like, But yeah. well, I, I didn't really fully understand what the, the premise, or what well, not the premise, but why it was getting made because it was completely being self-funded. Now there was a cast and he was paying everybody. And he was obviously after, this was his life savings. Is going this Michael Flatley's film? <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite. Okay. But it was... Uh, but it, the idea was that he was going to make it with all of us and yeah. in the hopes of putting it out to investors to get it remade. It's like, would a pilot not just a really intense pilot put all this money into like 10 minutes instead of actually trying to make the whole thing? Oh, and he wow. did. Yeah, he did. And he was a hell of a nice guy. He'd done a lot of, he, he, it would seem he had a successful enough writing career abroad somewhere. Mm. And this, he was desperate to make this. It was, it was dark. It was a fucking dark story like. And did you see, have you seen the finished thing? I saw, yeah, I did. And it looks good. It looks, it looks yeah. as, and this is the only thing that I ever take away from Irish, Irish filming. And I remember saying this, I don't know, was it to Blake or Fox or one of the days, the only, I, I'm a big supporter of anything Irish, but what's with the crunchy gravel? Why is there so always fucking crunchy gravel in any Irish fucking filmmaking? It's the, it's the crunchy gravel. We don't, we understand they're walking. We don't need to hear every, you never see it in any other fucking, coming from any other Maybe country. Maybe it's just lower in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> I, there you go. Like it's crunchy, crunchy. It's fucking crunchy. And it's like, it's. I've, I've never heard anyone complain about that yet. You're going to, I swear to God. Gonna, it's gonna, that's going to annoy me now. I'm going to see it in every film. Every Irish film, there'll be crunchy fucking gravel. Every fucking corner they walk around, it's like. And then they come to a stop and that's when it punctuates the start of their fucking, and you're like, oh, come on, that's come cool. on. We don't need to know the surface. Would that be, I, I, I never thought about that though, like making a, making the film and then trying to get it made again. Like, would you not be, would you not be doing it going, I've done this already. Yeah, and I mean, and he properly, it was properly heavily directed. It wasn't like, let's just throw it out there, guys. It was... It yeah, was he like it was, wanted, like, yeah. And he wanted it. I, he changed the name of it. So, and I don't actually remember what he said the new name of it was. It was, mm. it was a better name. It was a working title originally, and then it was a better name. Um, and it was small town Ireland based. The idea being, and it was based loosely based around kind of a, you know, bully of a father who was, who was a sporting star, and one of his sons was shit hot, the other wasn't so much shit hot, and that was where the bullying began. And it, it was, it ended it's up. Not- it's Can you like, remember the name of it? It's not vaguely familiar. Did it get released? Like, I don't. Only through festival. Red. There might have been something. You know what? There might I, have been something like about it. Like this is being made, or maybe you told me about it before. I can't remember. It just rings a bell. But anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he went to me. So I, under for all intents and purposes, they made the film. Yeah. But the idea then, when we met up for a coffee afterwards, you've got yeah. The idea is was. You go, and it was like I was going. So you're going to cast with just better and bigger actors, is that what you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. I was like, I take no insult to this. You have paid me for this uh, transaction, so that's absolutely fine. <laughs> but it was, but that's, it, like that's annoying if you get like you know it gets made for a massive budget and becomes this huge international success, and they're like, you're like, yeah, I suppose Tom Hardy was all right, in it, but like I <laughs> better job. That is the original. <laughs> Well, wasn't that the thing with Disco Pigs? Remember Disco Pigs, the Killian Murphy film? Yeah. That like so Killian Murphy and a, and, a, and another actor um, were doing the stage play for ages, and then they made the film, and he got cast in it, but she didn't. The cast someone else in the film. That must be. I'd say that was an awful kick in the teeth for her. It was. It almost happened with Damon Ivor. Oh um, really? Yeah, because they would. We done this Republic of Telly. Five. I did five or six sketches playing this character in in uh, Republic of Telly, and then. It got picked up by a production company and they said, yeah, well, we don't know who he is or who the fuck any of these guns are, actually. You're about the only constant that we have to keep in it because you you play both the characters, the lead fucking yeah. characters in it. 
the rest were going to have to fucking going to have to put out auditions you know so i had to audition for my own part and it was like 20 odd blokes that went for it like oh that's hard. but that's even hard to make that decision like as a as a director because you're like i have him doing this here like you have you you've you've been auditioning for it and every sketch that you did on yeah 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 and it it was written with me in mind and you know yourself you're writing with somebody who has specifically already played the character and you're writing writing into what they're doing yeah Yeah. definitely it's it's so much easier (laughs) yeah so and uh, now to be fair your man i think he was just he turned out to be a very nice man, but he was, fuck was he professional. It was incredible to yeah. see somebody so professional, yeah. but he was- I suppose when you're getting, you're getting your money from the film board and wherever else the investment came from, you have to go like, look, we're not just, you know. No, not, what you, I'm sure, I mean, they knew it. You went from having, you know, I think you were, we got about a hundred quid a man for doing the Republican telly things to go on. We're going to properly fucking pay the actor now, so. Yeah, yeah. You're getting picked up and brought to set and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's um there, it's a job now so yeah i suppose but um but sure you got the part anyway. oh yeah exactly and i mean, I'd still disappoint people when they hear me speaking they go ah oh, no <laughs> which is one of the still to this day one of the funniest things oh 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 this is oh oh right yeah they oh. had who was it um patrick murray used to talk about that like um your man who plays uh tom von lawler yeah, yeah, yeah. Hate that people would go like, oh, he talks posh. They'd be really disappointed when they find out that Nidge is a very well-spoken man. <laughs> I was in a taxi one night and a man went, yeah, and it was right around the time it was like season two of Day One Out and it was heading out of town and he was, oh, and he was looking into the rear view mirrors. Oh, well, yeah, oh, man, yeah, 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 Damon and I even now. I said, yeah, yeah, that's it, fuck Next thing he started, you could see him, his ears peek up. Went, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, were we heading to Fox Rock or what? I said, I don't know. We're heading out to fucking kill me and I'm there like a good man. He yeah. went, Are you a culture, you know? I said, I'm a culture, you know. But you know something? And he just went off on one about Nidge and me and fucking, he went off on one. And he's like, he just, his whole thing was, oh, I don't think it's Roy. Oh, I don't think it's Roy. Like, betrayed by acting <laughs> yeah all like we'd come into their living room now i'm in no way aligning myself with the fucking uh, the acting skills of tom vaughn lawler i'm just saying the man was angry that both of us that night so that's about the only time we had parity <laughs> like <I> just... <laughs> that's gas so that people would be like you know i'm so offended that oh, you yeah. on a television program pretended to be somebody that you're not but sure, i mean well it's whatever about me i mean but Nidge, like people were living Nidge, you know what I mean? They, yeah, like, Conor, oh, McGre- Conor, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor's Conor McGregor's whole character is based on Nidge, like you know it's, what I mean? It is the folk hero kind of thing, you know. Like, he's desperate, he's a bad guy, but he's he's such a great character, and he, I mean, Tom Von is so good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really, like he's, he's not. He's he's something else as an actor. But yeah, it's just funny when people get so annoyed, and especially I think that way, where somebody who's very kind of well-spoken and, and yeah, sort of yeah, or yeah. middle class is playing a working class guy and i don't think i don't think anyone would really like there is there's a history of that of in comedy especially of people you know kind of slumming it or whatever and and it can be it can go wrong but like i don't think anyone ever really complained about nidge except for just the shock of finding out that he's not he's not nidge in, or he's not from you know the flats. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Great. Um. <laughs> oh, don't think it's right. Don't think it's right. No, I don't think it's right. There should be a <laughs> tribunal about this. I'm not questioning that in the ball. Well, like apparently they did have a lot of actual natives, shall we say? On... Oh yeah, there's a lot of like people from cast who were around, and and they did like they did do street casting kind of stuff. Yeah, they have headbangers too, like some absolute lunatics turned up as well apparently it was fucking like um like they did with the wire like you know did, did, the, did the you wire, a load of a load of people in the wire were like had been in that like had, there was guys who had been in jail for selling drugs and were acting in it now like right. the um the woman who played um what's her name sloop or something she was a complete head case in it yeah she went back to jail like she was arrested for doing something 
<laughs> he was still kind of in there. But there was lads, like some, some of the cops had been, like guys who were playing cops had been cops in that situation. Some right. of the cops were like, there was some, oh, there was, um, I can't remember the name of the character, but he runs like a boxing club or something. And I think, and he's kind of trying to help, to help kids in the area. He had been like a major heroin dealer back in the day and had gone to jail and reformed and come out and was like, and I got this part. But like he had, I was reading about it and it was like, holy, like he was, he was a serious, serious criminal like back in the day. And here he was playing, playing the guy who's trying to keep the kids away from drugs. Like it was mad. I suppose, yeah, I, I played a bit of rugby in school all right back in the day. So that maybe qualifies me ever so slightly for that. <laughs> Oh, no, I've been, um, I, I think, what was I going to say? Oh, well, I, just... what I wondered because obviously stand up and having the ability to write so well and then having stand up as well being able to translate it, has that ever made you kind of want to go, here, uh, well, let's get out in front of the camera uh, totally, you know, to, yeah. I know you may have stuck your toe in that water a couple of times just because a gap needed to be filled or, or you're like, nah. That's great. No, no, it's not. It's not even, it's not, I'm not, I mean, the odd time you think, oh yeah, maybe, but no, I'm not, I'm, it's not something, I've just, I, I know so many actors and you see how hard it is and then you see people who are really good. Yeah. I remember getting like, you just, you know, you're directing someone and you're like, oh wow, that's me. Just the way they're delivering the line, you're like, that's so much better now the way right. it. Yeah. it makes it seem like I'm really good at writing <laughs> do do that? and you just know and you just know like I mean I, if I was I have I did a voice on um uh, Nowhere Fast Alison's um uh, sitcom oh yeah 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 I did a voice I rang into a radio show and I'm in the background I'm a racist DJ in the background of another scene I'm saying something about immigrants or something terrible. <laughs> but that was just... Classic Kean. Classic. Yeah, they look, they look, they needed a racist. <laughs> oh, this guy. I am, um, but that, no, I wouldn't, I'm not really, I know, you know, I know my place and it's not in front of the camera. <laughs> I, know. I, just, I, didn't, I don't think it would be, I don't think, I'm not even, even doing stand-up. I'm not, you can tell, you know that thing of like, somebody goes up on stage and maybe their material mightn't be like really, really top notch, but they're killing. And it's yeah. them. Something about them is just really engaging and the audience really enjoy it. And I know, because I've watched videos of myself doing stand-up, that is not me. No, <laughs> I'm relying solely on the material. And if the joke is funny and like I can settle it a bit, but I'm not, I'm in no way myself into thinking oh I'm, I'm, I'm here comes Vicker Street you know it's not it was never I never did stand up for that reason it was just kind of to see can I do it can I write jokes that make people laugh and then of course when I started doing it I was like oh this is a low crack yeah yeah well that yeah this is the other side of it yeah but and I like don't get me wrong when I was doing it people were like would well, you want to you know come on do the intro at the weekend or whatever it's like oh yeah yeah and someone's gonna give me money to tell jokes now that's even better but i was never i'd never really i was never really convinced of myself as a stand-up do you know what, do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah 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 if i saw me doing stand-up i'd be like oh yeah yeah some good jokes but yeah that's about it <laughs> <laughs> and that that is the one thing because i never set out to be an actor of any sorts like but what i did find more so than actually the anything with a camera but when i did panto yeah going back to stand up it lent into it something incredible yes and i didn't know what it was i just went uh, you know you're going back and you're using material whatever and you're going okay it wasn't that funny the last time i said it what what's changed and it's your, like oh it's my face is 10 times bigger you know what i mean your like performance it's performance skills have just been raised because you've been doing two shows a day for six weeks or whatever yeah. the panto run is grueling i'd say it's not too bad in in university in limerick it's uh it's three three weeks okay all yeah. right so it's two like i wouldn't i don't know i mean the panto run in, in the likes of the olympia and stuff like that they're all panto -y people and they've yeah. all done it but i couldn't i i just wouldn't have it in me i i don't sing or dance or anything Keen. i just come out and i'm pretty just much do the, you're the straight 
the straight role kind of. I'm no, I'm me. I'm just me. I normally played an authoritative role in it, or a complete. But who is it? Complete idiot. So I normally play the cop, or I play the huntsman, or I yeah, play yeah. whatever. But I'm normally an idiot. But they just let me play. But I, what I, what I didn't realize what I was doing was I was feeding the adults. All the rest tend to be feeding the kids. I'm feeding the adults to start the humour. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So and you've it's, got the lines that the parents are like, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Because I'm right. I like they allow me to rewrite a lot of my parts mm-hmm. um, or to at least modify them. And I, of course, modify them because I'm not a child and I know very little about children. Yeah. I write them for adults like I would, leaving out just the swear words and keep it right. a bit Tom, cheeky. Tom, you're, there's a lot of C words here that are not like <laughs> anymore. In the 80s, maybe. Not anymore. But they do run a, a one I'd love to do. They do not do run a, a one. I don't know, is it in Birmingham or something? But they run their two shows and then late at night, 10 o'clock. Do a late, late show panto. Yeah. And it's I've seen the videos of it. It's supposed to be, it's fucking brilliant. Now, it's a bit pervy in some of the... Oh, yeah, I like imagine the, it is. Well, I mean, theatre is a bit pervy anyway. Everybody's totally camp. And that's the thing, everybody's camp. Do you know what I mean? Every Like, male, female, straight, gay, bi, it's whatever. Theater. Everybody's just camp. Yeah. I even found myself, like, you know, coming back up. You know, getting... Oh, you ex- were calling people darling. I, I took back up the cigarettes, smoking them into the air. You know, darling. Was, <laughs> I'd become twink overnight. <laughs> Twink or at twink? Oh yeah, twink or at twink. I bet she. Did. I bet she. Sorry, she went with that name. I know she is. No, she's Probably not. Claims she invented the term. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. You're now. Yeah, that you mentioned it. I'm, still, no, I'm trying to work twink into sketches I'm writing at the moment, just to get something. Just to oh, something. if you need insight, <laughs> talk no, to I, this guy. I, I don't think. I don't think anyone's biting. I keep going. What about twink? And everyone else is like, no, we're not putting Twink in this. Oh, to actually use Twink? No, 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 to do an, someone to do an impersonation of Twink. <laughs> I, well, yeah, they, they, would you believe the lead choreograph, choreographer uh, on Disenchanted right now, and in Scary, she yeah. does an incredible Twink. Some she, of the stories you hear about that woman. Oh, I have a dossier. I have a dossier. Couldn't tell them on, on a podcast. No, well, you could. Oh, you could, actually, but there's... Ah, fuck it. I could do it. But um, <laughs> well, I just I'm just putting it out there for my legal team that I, I don't <laughs> do any of these or endorse any of these stories. Any audio listeners, uh, Keen is sitting back rubbing his hands together. He's just put the kettle on. He wants to hear all these stories. I, yeah. Oh, there's some good ones out there, to be, if, to be fair. I replaced her. You know, we never had we never crossed streams. I actually replaced her. She was right. in UTH and then she wasn't. And then I came in. Uh, okay. Just. A lot of work. And I'm, I'm guessing I'm a hell of a lot cheaper, actually, too, now that I think about oh, it. Oh, I, I, I'd say so, yeah. Well, cheap she, man, had, so. She, she had to have the her own dress. Cheap, cheap man. Yeah, I'm the cheap, <laughs> the poor man's twink. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I don't think anybody... anybody Put could, that on your CV. Anybody looking directly at my face with that written under me will go, I don't see it. I think, I they've, the wrong, I think they've got the photo wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's got. And um, sorry, let me just check something here. Oh no. What's happened? Ah, uh, somebody's changing a meeting. Um, oh yes, and I don't want to take up any more of your time because I know you're at, you're brilliantly. You are a busy man, which is great to fucking hear. Um, so when are we going back to stand up, Kian? You are coming back to stand up, aren't you? I don't know, Tom. I don't know. Um I mean, the pandemic didn't stop me. Didn't stop me doing. It did obviously stop me doing stand up. Stopped everyone doing stand up. But I was. I'd already kind of stopped. Do you know? Before, I was, and even before I left Dublin, I kind of petered off. You know, I was just kind of. I was getting busy, and I do that. It happened to me before, though, where I was like, ah, my interest goes down a bit, and and just you know yourself, you have to hustle yeah. to get the gigs, and then you have to take your evening to go you know, across town and yeah. to do 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, um, or 10 minutes in my case. Um, and then I, I just kind of stopped and then we moved and I was like, oh, well, I'm not driving up to Dublin. Yeah, yeah. To do, to do a gig. Yeah, yeah. And then if I'm up in Dublin I, for a weekend or something, um, I told myself and I was like, why would I be up in Dublin for a weekend? Yeah. What would I be doing? <laughs> so, um I, I I kind of petered off. I did a gig down here at the, the one of the festivals someone had put on, and um, 
that had kind of that reminded me of like this is really enjoyable. Like it was one of those games that was packed out and it was good. Just everyone was on, you know, those yeah, games, yeah, and, yeah. You can't bomb. You just and I just went out and did like the the ten, 10 or 15 or whatever I was doing that I was like, well, this always, you know, this this works and there you go. And it, it everything, everything was it landed. And I kind of had myself and um Sky Shane O'Keefe, we'd had a conversation about maybe setting up a club down here because there's nothing running down in Kilkenny. No. Um and we kind of talked about it, we talked to a couple of venues, and then we kind of took the foot off the pedal a little bit on that and then the pandemic happened so like obviously out the door so you never know it might be something but it's it kind of feel like if i got back into stand-up i'd have to set up a night and kill kenny yeah but then, i mean then, they, they do go to stuff like i t- i took caveman i did i didn't take the production company brought caveman the one man play that i was doing took it to kill kenny and it was a sunday night and i thought ooh. but yeah. it, it was that theater christ what's the name of it it's down Mm, I cannot remember the name of the theater. It was uh, it was a, it was a fine old like it was it was you know it was a fine fine theater and they still Watergate was it? It was the Watergate. Yeah, right. across was, some, across some years. It's a lovely place. Yes. Yeah. And then we got good numbers in there. They were good. It was a Sunday night audience, so they were a bit on the quieter side, but they were lo- like class a class audience. That's a bunch of people hanging around the foyer afterwards and stuff like that. So I definitely think. Or maybe perhaps would you have you have you considered writing anything for you know writing a play? You know, every so often I think about it and then I'm like, oh yeah, I should do this. And then my problem sometimes is that I go, oh yeah, I should do this, and I start doing something new. And then you're like, would you not just concentrate on the thing you were doing? Yeah, yeah. Just not be spreading yourself thin. Um, because I'm you know, I'm writing this year, this year is the first year that I've been writing is my job like the whole year so far brilliant that's so class. been like that's paid the bills that's the whole and it's the first year i've done it completely you know 100 percent of the of the income is is writing um so i'm doing like a good bit of stuff for people and then i'm trying to get my own stuff off the ground which is obviously you're fitting it around the paid work and then i'd say and then i have thoughts like that maybe i'd write a play you know don't stop i get you just just do the thing you're doing until it's done and then maybe think about something else. Like, you know, it's... Yeah, 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 yeah. I concentrate myself on a couple of projects of my own, but then you know, not, not get too distracted. But at the same time, like if somebody, somebody came along and was like, we've got this, you know, this great idea, this great scheme where these actors who need a, a script for a play, you'd be like, oh yeah, I wrote a play once a short play years ago when I was in school and like had it on in the Cork Arts Cork Theatre Festival I think it was Cork Arts Festival something like that about 20 years ago 20 something years ago so you're a veteran is what you're I'm telling a veteran I'm an award winning player like, sorry I keep forgetting to tell people yeah. that I mean <laughs> award winning is such a great phrase that everyone is an award winner these days oh, every filmmaker is an award winning filmmaker if of course, they've, yeah. if they've <laughs> Entered enough shit festivals, you know, you win something somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as comedy competitions, the same. Yeah, award winning comedian. Yeah. Who is taking the comedy scene in Ireland by storm? By storm. By storm. Every comedian is taking the comedy scene. One of the busiest acts in the country. One of the busiest acts in the country. (laughs) What what can we expect to see you in or hear from you next? What what can we look out? I know there's like the no messages and stuff like that. And oh, I have that. And um, well, I I'm writing at the moment. I'm writing for uh, uh oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say Class. what it is. That sounds I, really I have, cryptic. If you go back and if you go back and listen to Callan's Kicks, I've been I've been writing for Callan's Kicks on the the old podcast. Yes, there. they're all up. I've contributed to Callan's Kicks for the last few years. Sketches to that. Um, I have. I'm working on animation stuff, but that takes so long and it's down the line before anything like that comes out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I have, I don't know, God, I should know what I have. <laughs> My, well, I tell you what, what, it's going to be releasing online is Rip to the Rescue, which is a short I made, I wrote, and Paddy Baggett directed it. It's a sci fi comedy set in post apocalyptic Ireland with Rose Henderson and Claire Monley uh, are the leads. And say, say no more. Is there is there a dog in it at all? 
There's no dog in it. There's no, kind of alien creatures. Um, I'll say no more. Try to say eat no more. Um, that is, I must talk to Paulie actually, that's going to be going up online at some point over the next while. It's kind of near Rip the end. Rip to the rescue. Run. Rip to the rescue, it's called. I, yeah. I love the, yeah, I love the idea of that. I love it. That is one of those ones where we, it was a, a, a stupid, bizarre idea and I, figured nobody would ever be interested in this and next minute some place are going yeah we'd love to give you money to make that okay can't tell can't tell what people <laughs> no. are going to like but there you go i'm glad they did great, great it's story. probably a one in film base was it yes that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it was the same woman i can't remember what her name was i wish i remembered but um yeah no that's that's going to be up soon enough rip to the rescue is probably the next thing that i've written that people can see that i can talk about right now because i don't want to say you know, you don't want to announce something if it hasn't been announced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to be that bollocks. And next thing, all of a sudden, you're getting a text and you're going, oh, I've been that God. bollocks enough. I don't want to do it again. Yeah, I've done it myself. Being an absolute yeah. langer of just coming out and going, eh. no, Tom, no. <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. Yeah, not supposed to say that, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, Kian McGargle, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much, man. Thanks a million, Tom. This is great.